the art of submissiveness. How can it enhance your sex life? Let's talk about it. Today with me is the fabulous Pamela Madsen, who is a somatic wellness educator. Pamela founded Back to the Body, Inc., a sexual wellness retreat for women, now in its 12th year, with a study recently published on their transformative power. She was featured everywhere. Oprah, Cosmo, Women's Health, CNN, The New York Times, and the list goes on and on. I am honored that you are here. Hi, Pamela. Hi, I'm excited. Oh my God. I mean, I my mean, arousal is like really high right now. Ooh, are you like wet right now? <laughs> well, probably. Ooh. So what, what if we just keep up between us? I love that. I love that. <laughs> uh, my first game for the show is called Would You Rather with Dr. Tara. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Would you rather get a nipple piercing or go to CVS with a vibrating butt plug inside you? CVS vibrating <laughs> butt plug inside me. And this is an educated, informed, informed choice. Yes. I actually went to a grocery store um, with a vibrating egg. It's not quite the same, but a vibrating egg inside my vagina. Oh my God. And I was very inexperienced back then. I was wearing loose pants. Oh, and it popped out, rolled down my leg, <laughs> and a man watched it. Oh my God! And I looked at him. He looked at me, and I said, five, five second rule." And I <laughs> bent down. We all know the five second rule, right? Yes. Bent down, picked up the egg, opened my pants, and dropped it back in, and kept on marching. Oh my God. I, I yeah. figured you must have so many sexy stories. <laughs> I can't believe you wore, was it a vibrating egg? It was a vibrating egg. A vibrating egg in your yeah, bag was, to the supermarket. Was, was, yeah, well, it was, it was, I was out with my then, I play in Dom, this is a mission, something you want to talk about, I think. And I was with my then Dom and we had to go pick up a bottle of wine and he was like, put this in. Oh, And I was like, oh. Yes, sir. yes, Danny. Of, of, course, of course, sir. And I I wasn't dressed, as I said, appropriately for gear. Um, loose fitting pants. No, no, no. If you're gonna do shit like that, you wear tights. Okay. Yeah. You want something that's gonna hold that in. If it's a but I don't care what it is, if it's in an orifice down below, you want you want wear tight pants. pants. Yes. Oh, wow. There you go. The number one, the first tip of the show, wear tight pants. If you're going to wear a vibrating butt plug or a, a, some kind of a vagina plug thing. <laughs> because you never know. You Five never second know. rule. Five second rule. <laughs> Um, uh, before we started the show, you we were talking a little bit about your relationship structure. Can you share with my audience a little bit about that? I got married so so young. Yeah. That it should not have been allowed. Okay. <laughs> I look at my wedding pictures. I look a little dolly, you know? <laughs> so I met my husband when I was almost 17. And we really got married very, very quickly. So mm -hmm. I've been in a marriage for over 30 years. Wow. Uh, my husband's. Oh, he's a fucking love warrior, my husband. Oh, love that. Um, so he's, to the best of my knowledge, monogamous. Okay. Um, I am, you know, that lovely term monogamish, uh -huh. which to me means uh -huh. that I tend to be in a secondary relationship uh -huh. to a particular human. Okay. Until it ends. Okay. And I've had a few of those relationships in my life. And um and is it usually a dom and sub relationship? It's usually a DS relationship. And that's really the agreement with my husband. Okay. Is I don't do dominance and submission with him. Uh-huh. Um we have a pretty um equal balanced relationship with power. Uh-huh. And and I think that for a lot of people. 
who are experimenting with what we may call kink mm -hmm. um, or fetish, which for me isn't kink or fetish. You know, they always, you know the saying, it's only kinky the first time. Yeah, right? you're like, it's and, just normal life. <laughs> right, it's just normal life, right. Kinky is um, normal for me. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, I'm always a secondary because I can't be a primary. And I'm usually the, not usually, I am always. Mm -hmm. um submissive in the relationship so and powerful women dr tara yeah extraordinary submissives yeah i believe you i mean i would say most of the times although we're not really role playing and it's not really like you know in a in a real sense like a ds relationship but when we do have sex i tend to be more submissive and kind of <laughs> go with the flow and let my partner lead me and that makes me more comfortable there there's a few times where i'm like ooh i feel spicy today and i kind of want to dom someone but generally i'm i'm happy being the submissive at night because all day long i'm making decisions and, you know, um, working with a team. And when I'm home, I just kind of want my partner to take the lead. I, I get that. And there's so many different ways to play, yeah. right? You know, you had asked me about the art of submission. Yes. So and the art of submission, what is it? Well, it can have many different palettes, right? So it could be um, like you're talking about being an active receiver, mm -hmm. right? allowing your partner to um, control the movement or the scene or whatever is happening, right? Mm -hmm. um, for me, the art of submission is very active, mm. very active role. So I- Wow, like, that's so I'm, interesting. Just the fact that you said that, I'm already intrigued. Like the art of submissive to you, the, being submissive is active. Is active. So what that means to me is if I'm in service, to a dominant. Okay. And again, it's it's going to be a particular rare human that attracts me and makes me love him mm -hmm. and want to be of service to that person. Mm -hmm. And so what that means to me is being hyper aware mm -hmm. of their needs. Mm -hmm. So like, what does this dominant need? You know, the art of submission is the art can be the art of giving. You know, how do, how am I in service to this person? You know, they may tell me they've had a really rough day mm -hmm. and they may open up their email and there would be a massage gift certificate. Oh, you know, because I'm taking care of them. They need okay. that. So it's, you know, knowing that they like things a particular way and mm -hmm. making sure that even if it's not you know, I'm not a neat human being. I am usually a hot, messy girl. <laughs> in the best way. <laughs> in the best ways. And so, but my dominant could be very neat mm -hmm. and want a bed made and all those types of things. So then I need to be hyper aware mm -hmm. that I'm not just doing Pamela, mm -hmm. who doesn't give a flying you know what about her bed sheets. Yeah. But it's important to this human. Wow. That I'm in service to that the bed is made properly every morning and that his coffee is perfect. And then when he wakes up in the morning, the coffee is waiting for him. And that that's active. Yeah, you know, that's I super it's, active. It's like, you know, I want to and I take huge pride in making sure that everything is the way it is. And I want to May I tell you something that I don't think is talked about very often? Of course. I'm I'm excited to hear. Okay. I think the biggest gift a submissive has to offer to a dominant is permission to be dominant. Oh, interesting. You're now saying that doms do want permission from their subs? Well, you know, we live in a culture. Yeah. That doesn't permission. So we just talk right now heteronormative, but it doesn't have to be. Uh -huh. Okay. But just in this conversation, right? Talk about a man and a woman. Uh -huh. Okay. Men are 
you know, the Me Too movement, all these things have been around. Mm -hmm. Often men are very frightened to show any kind of forcefulness or mm -hmm. or what might be perceived as aggression mm -hmm. towards a female bodied person. Yeah. And what a good submissive or a very talented submissive like you <laughs> is she encourages her dominant oh. to bring that energy. And again, that could be two men, two women, whatever. Yeah. But particularly in heteronormative relationships, men have been told, no, that's mm -hmm. not right. You don't do that. You don't get pushy with a woman. You don't tell her what to do. You ask her her preferences, mm -hmm. right? You don't push her against the wall. You don't bend her over. You know, you, it's, 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 DS or sex in general is not necessarily politically correct. Right. But we and I think that's why it's so hot for a lot of people. Absolutely. And so I feel like one of my biggest gifts to the people who I've served yeah. is the permissioning of their sadists, uh. the permissioning of their dominance, the appreciation of that and putting out a welcome mat. Yeah. And say, yeah. you know, yes. Thank you. More, please. Oh. More. Can you can you bring me more, sir? Right? Ooh. Wow. And so it sounds to you like the art of submissiveness is not at all just about sex. Oh no. It's like but, everything. Well, it's the why don't we replace the word sex with the erotic? The erotic. Right? So DS for me, dominant submissive. Power exchange is erotic mm -hmm. and it's erotic in the doing. It's erotic in the caring, you know, of making of it's erotic in, in like picking out the perfect present for them. Yeah. And it's also erotic when they grab me around my neck uh -huh. <laughs> with yeah. just the right amount of tension. Yeah. And, you know, and throw me around and tie me up and, you know, have me pleasure them with my body or even be very still. Mm. Like how, like being told to be quiet while intensifying, while the lovemaking, while the DS is very intense being asked to hold my energy yeah like the orgasm at the end of that yeah Dr. Tara uh-huh amazing is, is amazing so think okay. about I've, I've never had one like edging, that think about edging on steroids wow okay like so a lot of people call that dolly play dolly play right so have you heard that is, term? no what is dolly play Oh my God, I'm telling Dr. Tara something new. Please. It's exciting <laughs> for me. So dolly play is when one of you, you know, it could be a man or a woman, in this case, me, yeah. um, is told that we're going to play dolly. And I become a living doll. And so I can get dressed up or they may pick out an outfit they want me to be dolly in. They may even buy an outfit for me to play dolly Ooh, and they may buy I like a little and shopping. Yeah, there may be shopping involved. And then I'm usually, if I'm if I'm to be dressed, I'm usually like on the bed waiting. Oh. And I'm a doll. Oh, wow. And they can be doing lots of things to the dolly. Right? Oh. Um, but dollies don't make noise. Oh. And dollies don't move. They have to be moved around. Right. So, so interesting. It's so hot. It's really yeah, like it edging by, it's really like edging on the next level because like I'm a person who loves to move in my eroticism. I yeah. love to make sounds. I love to like move or I teach women I how follow to follow you on Instagram. I see all your uh, movement. <laughs> it's so erotic. You're a very sexual and sensual woman. Thank you. I think there's no it's undeniable. Um I'm like I'm very curious how you got this way. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
It's a great question. I mean, I wrote a whole book about it. Ooh. Called Shame, it's called Shameless. Um, how I ditched the diet, got naked, found true pleasure, and somehow got a home in time to cook dinner. Oh and my was, God. Oh, Love all it, of those things. It was published by Rodell. I think it's owned by Penguin now. And so it's my it's my story about how I got this way, which is basically I was a very in a lot of ways still am, believe it or not, Dr. Mm -hmm. Tara. Like my last lover said, I'm very confusing because I'm very mainstream and very not mainstream all at the same time, right? So I was a kindergarten teacher. I got married really young. I was a fertility uh -huh. advocate. And all my friends, when I was in, in my, my late 30s, um, early 40s, started having affairs. Now, we're talking, you know, 1990, um, like in there, 95 maybe, I don't know the exact year, but we didn't have like polyamory. Right, like, right. We didn't yeah. have this language. Yeah. Sensual non monogamy. No, it was cheating. Right. That's all it was, at least where I was hanging out on, you know, and I didn't want to cheat, but my girlfriends were lit. I mean, they were all in marriages and were like, oh, sex goddesses and I wasn't a sex goddess mm. and I had a gay massage therapist mm -hmm. and God almost everything I've learned about sex I've learned from gay men Tara I, mean, <laughs> I gay love men, that gay men are uh, have been like <laughs> the angel on my arm and he's telling me about this thing called erotic massage and sacred uh -huh. And that's how he keeps his marriage together. And wow. I only know him unconscious. Like I, I sat right up from the massage table and I went, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I could, I could do massage. Mm -hmm. And that felt like I, it was something I could do. It wouldn't be cheating and I could experiment. And so I went looking. And, you know, women paying for any kind of sexual encounter, um, going back 10 years, and even now, I mean, it's yeah. there's, there's like women, why does a woman have to pay for it, right? Right. Well, women pay for things the same reason why men have paid for things. Uh-huh. Because they want it separate from their lives. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And maybe they want to experiment with things they don't want their partner to know about yet. Mm -hmm. because once you tell your partner they know forever yeah right and so I wasn't sure even really what I was looking for yeah but I went looking and it was for really erotic hard. massage for, for erotic yeah. massage for that good old happy ending massage yeah I was on a hunt and I couldn't find it I couldn't find it anywhere so uh -huh. I started to look on gay men's sites oh yeah <laughs> And there was a plethora of choices. And I wrote to them like, hi. I had a pseudonym. Yeah. Like, like I am you... gay. I'm, I'm married. I don't want like anything that you don't want to do. I don't want either. So like, you know, intercourse is off the table. And would you work with a woman? And it took me a while and um, a couple of tries. Very funny. It's in my book. And I found a, a sacred intimate. And who turned into a sexological body worker and who opened the doors for me. This man, um, he was the tantric tiger. He passed away this year. Um, Marcus, the tantric tiger, like opened the doors for me, introduced me wow. to the entire world of sexological body work, sacred intimacy, introduced me to people um, who are now lifelong friends and pushed me around my fantasies. Yeah, yeah. And I and, um for my dear listeners, if you don't know what sexological body work is, I have a whole episode about that. So definitely give it a listen. But yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I am a certified sexological body worker. Love that. And I went and, you know, put next to my master's in education, I put my <laughs> CSB. It. Um yeah, Sarah Lawrence would be so proud. So I just, you know, kept moving it along. Yeah. And he helped me 
verbalize what I had shame around. And this is before yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. And spanking was a big deal. Yeah. And he got me to say it. To, and, you know, you need support. You don't need yeah. permission. You need support. And I got support in finding out what my core erotic being is. Yeah. And in the world, I'm a leader. Yes. I'm a teacher. Yes. Um, a mother, a wife. Uh huh. And in my personal life, you're a sub. I'm. I get to kneel. Yeah. And that's a feminist choice. Yes. And if I wasn't fully in my full erotic being, if I didn't understand who I was erotically, mm -hmm. if I was. If I wasn't able to dispel shame, mm -hmm. these are big things for people. Yeah, to work through, as you know. Yeah, one hundred. There's also a narrative of like, if you're a submissive woman, then you're not a feminist, and that's bullshit. And, and it really makes me angry mm -hmm. when women tell me what I can have and not have. Exactly. I yeah. mean. So you're, so you're actually a part of the patriarchy mm -hmm. because you're telling a woman who knows her own mind, has studied her own body. Exactly. What, how to play her instruments. Yeah. And I choose. Freedom of choice, play. baby. <laughs> right. I, I choose how I play my instrument. And again, a lot of our erotic needs are particular. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah. I may be submissive to this person, mm -hmm. but not everybody else. Mm. And don't you try that with me mm -hmm. because we don't have an agreement and I don't feel drawn to give you that part of me. It's very because specific. When I, it's there for me. Yeah. So for me, it's not a role play game. Wow. Now I can drop into a role play game and I can mm -hmm. teach people how to do that and at my retreats, women um, at Back to the Body, women are able to explore that if they want to. It's available. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's a lifestyle. Okay. And it's like if I am giving my devotion and my gifts, my mm -hmm. resources mm -hmm. to a person. Yeah. It's to that person. That's so interesting. Now, so then with your husband, and you've been in this marriage like 30 years. My whole life. <laughs> your whole, yeah, basically since yeah, you were 18. My whole life, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and he's kind of along for the ride and ex like accepts you. And you said off the camera that he was a love warrior. Yeah, he is. Uh, and I love hearing that. That's so interesting. So he himself um, has not felt the desire to explore. This with me, no, no. Right. I mean, early on, way, way, way early on, I invited him to right. explore. He went actually for a um, hands-on sexological bodywork session. Yeah. Um, with me and Marcus, we both gave to him, and um, he understood it. Yeah. And he was like, "I, I get it, and it's, this isn't for me. Right. And it's okay if it's for you." Yeah, and then yeah. later on, as I became more developed and more sophisticated in my own eroticism, mm -hmm. because this was not about a broken marriage bit. Mm -hmm. This was not about like I didn't, I couldn't find my orgasm or right. I didn't right. masturbate or right. I've been masturbating since I've been breathing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like me Thanks. and my clients. Right. Me and my clip, you know, we, we go way back. We go way back. We're best we friends. Way back. Right. We're, we're very close. <laughs> this wasn't about that. Yeah. This was about the exploration for me mm -hmm. was that I knew there was more. Yeah. And I wanted the more. And I wanted to have that lit feeling that my girlfriends had. Mm -hmm. And I have that lit feeling mm -hmm. um, that my girlfriends had, like well past my girlfriends. I've left them in the dust. Of course. You know? <laughs> now I'm really curious if you have to um, give three tips to becoming 
a sophisticated, a more, let's say three tips for a more sophisticated submissive. What would be these three tips? Oh my. Identify who you are as a submissive. Okay. I think that's there, there are different kinds of submissives. I mean, there are like people who love being bratty, right? Yeah. People who like to, they call top from the bottom, like, you know, fake, fake your submissiveness, you yeah. know, that's a game. Yeah. Are you like an animal? Are you a puppy? Yeah. Are you like people play with, with ponies and puppies. Um, and I'm or a dolly <laughs> or a dolly. Uh -huh. um, and I happen to be um, submissive, erotically submissive with a talent yeah. for service. Oh. And service is my pleasure. I think it's why I run fantastic retreats yeah. because I pay attention to detail and what people want and think about them. Like yeah. what's going on for them? What, what, what do they need? Now, how can I yeah. support them? So, so the biggest tip is who are you? Yes. Who are you as a submissive? And once you figure that out, yes. Um, again, forget permission around yeah. your sexuality. You need support. Yes. So find community, find a teacher, find a mentor, find a program, read about. I mean, there's some yeah. great books. Yeah. And they're great programs where you can try this out and understand it and number three is don't have anyone tie you up that you don't know uh-huh period it's, it's, like serious i mean <laughs> do not do ds casually yeah another, another dominatrix told me the same thing is she's concerned that a lot of normies are just like playing with bdsm with like no care in the world and that's no good no good, no good. Know your dominance. Mm -hmm. Get references. Know who. Yeah. You are. Like ask around, and then are you? Do you feel erotically attracted to this person? Mm. I mean, when I give of myself, mm -hmm. like you know, I know you've like done like these great talks. I and I watch you so much on like the best blowjobs or the best. Yeah. Best. What the best is wanting to give it more than anything yeah like like wanting the best blow job is like like you're dreaming about the smell of that man's car yes you want your nose in there you want it everywhere and you want the and you want to be an advocate yeah for your your person's pleasure so ds not ds mm -hmm. you know I think the best lovers yeah. are people who are advocates for their partner's pleasure. Oh, so that's so beautiful. So what that means to me, Tara, is when they say, I don't think I'm going to come or your mouth must be getting tired or uh -huh. you can do something else. It's like, oh, no, baby. I am. I am here for you. Wow. And you like stay with that human. You just stay with that yeah. unit until they can find what for them is yeah. their pitiful pleasure. And, you know, I think we give up on each other. Mm -hmm. You need to have erotic endurance. Yeah, erotic endurance. I like yes. that. You should totally mm -hmm. coin that term. <laughs> there, we coined it. Yes. Okay, what is erotic endurance? Well, having the stamina. Um, to stay with your partner's pleasure. Mm -hmm. So for me, erotic endurance is I can give a blowjob for an hour. Whoa. And, and, oh my and, God. And it's not just sucking a cock. Yeah. There are the inner thighs. There's a belly. There's yeah. a chest. Whole art so of cock a, sucking. There's a whole, you know, there's a whole body there that's a, that, and yes, obviously the cock, um, but, you know, and you have your hands and your mouth and all of you and your breasts and if you if you have them. Um, and so, and do you find pleasure in that? Yeah. So for me, I find incredible, the right person, incredible pleasure in yeah. staying with my partner's 
pleasure mm -hmm. until they're exhausted. Wow. <laughs> Damn, and, you literally suck him dry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and, and you, know, you talk about the art of submission. I mean, that's an art. Yeah, it's it really art. is. It's also like the art of sex. It's the art of pleasure. It's the I art can't of do more than 15 minutes. <laughs> well, well, use your hands too, darling. You know, that's it's true. Whole, I gotta mix it up. And it's then the whole it's the, play, whole the whole thing, the thighs, the belly, the knees, belly, like the whole little thing. Bites, little bites okay. everywhere, you know. Um I'm curious. You, know, you were you were talking about you said with with the right person. Uh yeah. I can go for an hour. Now I'm curious to like what are some characteristics of a good dom? Presence. Presence. Like I mean, in, and that's the same thing. Presence? Well, well, it's the same thing. Like, what's the the most characteristic? What's the best characteristic of a great submissive? Presence. Great characteristic of a good dom. Presence. Mm. Attention. Attention. Creativity. Creativity. Yeah. I mean, they really are mirrors, right? Mm. They're just different sides of the polarity. But what I seek in a dom is what I actually give to a dom, mm -hmm. which is my creativity, my attention, my my resources. Like, you know, when I say resources, like sharing my world. Yeah. Sharing my world. Um, I don't like to be in the in the closet. You know, I want to be out and about. Mm -hmm. um, so I want my dom to care about me. Yeah. And to show me loving attention. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm getting 24-7 attention. Nobody can sustain that. Right. But maybe it's a text that says, good morning, I'm thinking about you. I think there is a stereotype that a dom is mean to a sub. What do you say to that? Sometimes they're mean. But in a sexual way. Well, you know... Um, there's emotional sadism. Yeah. And physical sadism. I like them both together in one package. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, so I like a little bit of being kept on my toes. Mm, I see. I like a little, a, a little mental anguish. Ah, a little mm -hmm. physical anguish. Um, that's different than, so it's really interesting, right? It's, it needs to be intentional. Yeah. And not just cruel to be cruel to me. Right. Right. It's got to be like with a reason. Mm, I see. And, you know, it, there's got to be a purpose in the emotional, what I would call emotional correction. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found in my relationships um, is that sometimes if we get like fighty, mm -hmm. Like we're, we're doing that thing. Yeah. And they can do that thing in a DS relationship yeah. or a regular relationship. But in DS, the, at least in my agreement, my dom is allowed to offer correction. Mm. And I find it cathartic for, for them mm -hmm. and for me. Wow. So if the correction is I'm going to get three swats of the paddle or something, or yeah. it can Ooh. be something, it could be something that you don't even think about. Yeah. But, um, I did something once with, with this, this Dom I was with and um, I forget what it was, but it was definitely, I was definitely naughty and we were going out for dinner and we were in a different kind of a place and he stopped by a pharmacy he had a cab driver stop by a pharmacy yeah like, what are you doing he said you just wait here and i'm like okay and he pops in and he has tape oh and he he wrapped my two fingers like this in tape oh two fingers okay it was a really fancy restaurant what and I had these two fingers taped. What? And that and that was my punishment. Oh my god! <laughs> That's so decided, interesting. Right, and I've been forced to like I um in one other scenario, 
Um, he, we went shopping for but things. But you enjoyed and, that. Yeah, it was <laughs> fun. So that's like agony and be delicious yeah. and fun. So agony what was can be delicious. I like that. And fun. Yeah. So he, he was offering me creative discipline. Yeah. I and it required that. him to use his mind, attention, yeah, presence, execution. Ooh. delivered and yeah wow. and that that brings forward in me like a more awakeness yeah to what am I doing and how am I doing it because I think that this idea of doing things to be bad to get punishment is bullshit yeah that's not the only <laughs> that's that's just being silly uh-huh you know? um so, you know, establishing a relationship. Interesting. Wow. So with all this knowledge, you have your retreat back to the body. Right, um, which has nothing to do with dominance and submission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like just knowledge and eroticism. Absolutely. And personal experience and professional experience. And you also bring like guests, right? Um, Co-teachers. Oh my God. Well, back to the body. We're celebrating our 12th year. In fact, we're having our big anniversary retreat. Is it um, only for women? It is only for women, okay. but we have male practitioners. Okay. And so back to the body has been designed for women. Okay. And um, a safe place for women to be held in the masculine in a sisterhood of women. Okay. So I have female therapists, psychotherapists yeah. on staff, female sexologists on staff. We call them safe ports. Yeah. The men stay completely clothed. Okay. Um, they wear gloves for any kind of genital touch. It's yeah. one way touch. Okay. No one's like taking out their magic lingam. You know, none uh, of that. Yeah. So <laughs> that's my second question was like, what do you do at the retreat? Well, they're very long days. Right. Um, women have workshops. They get sessions every day. They're paired with one practitioner. Okay. For the entire retreat. Okay. They meet their practitioner before the retreat. Uh -huh. They have an intake. And then they have five sessions over over a span of six or seven days. Okay. They vary in length depending on the retreat, 90 minutes to a three hour session, wow. depending on again what they what they choose. And we teach about arousal and they get to see live demos. Like, so they can watch like a woman gets her clit rubbed. Oh, you. <laughs> they watch you. Like, for, for example, get your clit rubbed. Like, more, uh, than, more than my clit rub. They watch the me. Body and like, they, yeah. watch, they watch connection. Wow. They get to practice intimacy. Wow. They get to see me being intimate. Yeah. But not romantic. And do they get one-way touch from practitioners? Yes. Wow. That's the point, right? Do you like let go, let loose? And, and well, many women don't even know what they want. They, right. They, they they don't know about their arousal. They don't know about their orgasm. They have body shame. Right. They have all these fears. And what's extraordinary is that, you know, this work has been going on, you know, for the millennium, yeah. right? And, you know, Masters and Johnson, and this has been going on yeah. for a long time. In my experience as a client of this work, there wasn't enough safe containers mm -hmm. where women could come and have their experiences in a boundaried way. Mm -hmm. And while this this study was just released, they yeah, were able you published a study on this. So, so it's not just so we're clear. It's I'm gonna put my glasses on because I want to look at it, make sure I get this right. All Perfect. right. Because <laughs> the study was just released. Yeah. And, so the study, um, what is the study about? It's called Exploring Erotic Potential. Okay. Research findings regarding sexological body work at a woman's back to the body retreat and the perceived impact. And the researchers were Dr. Betsy Crane, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Elise Becker, B E C H E R, and um, Casey Malley from oh. Widener University. Wow. And it was first presented at ASEC's 51st annual conference in 2019. And just got published for the first time. And they studied back to the body right. because we are a consistent model. Right. So it's not like cowboys. And, you know, it's like 
this is how we do it. This yeah. is the experience that the women can have. And it was a quantitative and qualitative study. Wow. It was very, very rich. And um, what were the you know, findings? They're pretty amazing. So 93% of the women reported a certificate, a certificate so I can't even say the word, significantly. There we go. Yes. They said blowjobs just fine. So significantly increase in their sexual self-image, 93, 93%. 91% found an increase in body image, 87% in arousal, 87% in sisterhood. Oh, because women learn to trust other women. Yeah, and that's so important. They weren't competing. Yeah, everyone got the same slice of cake. Um, eighty-seven percent reported positive feelings about their genitals. Love that. Seven percent sexual assertiveness, and eighty percent an increase of sexual satisfaction. And the big takeaways. So they did interviews with the women yeah. they did pre post and post surveys yeah and then they did in-depth interviews with the women yes yeah, so what's the big takeaway the importance of a safe container mm. um connecting to self and others mm. feeling acceptance mm. and permission exploring arousal and pleasure and transformative life changes they wow. changed their lives some of them began relationships, some ended them, some moved across the country, some changed careers, some became sexological body workers. Yeah. Well, it sounds yeah. like and, a sounds like an ayahuasca retreat. <laughs> well, you know what I say to people? Yeah. Is the mushroom is actually in your body. Yeah. That when women experience arousal, uh -huh. real arousal, not five minutes before he puts his dick in you. Uh -huh. Okay. Like, oh, she's wet. It's time to put, it's time to have intercourse, right? Uh -huh. But 90 minutes of somebody attending to your pleasure, uh -huh. not being, not concentrating on orgasm. Mm -hmm. Women can go into erotic trance states. Wow. And have wow. downloads and see things. And I do it all the time. And that only happens for me anyway. Uh -huh. It's one way touch. And a blindfold helps. And just going deep inside your own body. We have an inner pharmacy. Yeah. And we get to explore it. And so Back to the Body was created for that. And I yes, you you're curious about, you, you know what? We've had lots of famous people. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Um, Emily has come on. Lots of the Jaya. Um, they're public about it. I can say their names. Um you wow. know, have come to the retreats because, you know, we need sex educators. Yeah. We need a place to go to. Yeah. Because it's not just people who have trauma. Yeah. It's not just people who, and of course, they need a safe place. We have that. Mm -hmm. It It's also for people like me. I think it's like all women. All women. And our demographic, our demographic is between 22 and 93. <laughs> I love that. Someone so 93 have, went to this retreat. My wow. mother. Oh, that's awesome. My mother. Wow. What did mom say? Transformative. Mom, mom was blown away. Oh, we bet. She hadn't been touched erotically in like 40 years. Oh, wow. Um, she ejaculated. Yeah. She, oh, like, my God. She's like, oh, my God. I thought I was dead and I'm not. I'm alive. Oh, I want to send my mom. <laughs> Right, we 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 have another mom coming to this next retreat. Um, so the the women are um, a lot of women in their thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, and seventies. Uh huh. And ninety three really was an outlier, but mm -hmm. a lot of women um, yeah, between the ages that of sounds 40 like and 80, anybody, and anybody, because you know what, the erotic doesn't age. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's, that's a story. Yeah. And there's so wow. much erotic potential in our bodies. And we all need a place. Yes. To express it. Yeah. What are my what are my teachers said? Um, 
she was like, oh my God, I need a back to the body retreat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so sometimes my female um, administrators and, and teachers will attend for themselves. Oh yeah. <laughs> I will be attending. I would love to have you. Oh my God. It sounds amazing. And we have a 98% return rate. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and we're a little bit like a bag of salty potato chips. <laughs> you know, you, you think you're going to just eat one chip. Yeah. And then you're like, and I then, want the whole bag. I want another bag. Like, I want another bag of chips. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and gosh. you're going to book a year in advance. I bet. Yeah. I got to book and now for next year. We do payment plans. We do oh all the gosh. things. And it's a beautiful gift for yourself. And so whatever you're curious about, mm -hmm. we do have a retreat that is just for dominance and submission okay. called Check Toe Surrender. But you have to have been to other retreats. Right. Yeah. Or you can attend that. It's more. And, well, it's a it's a it's a it's like stepping into an erotic novel. Yeah. And it's a 24 seven retreat and we have to really know the women Yeah, um, yeah. who attend that. Most of our women are just interested in finding their bodies. Yeah. And raising their pleasure ceilings. And what is said to us over and over again is, oh my God, this is day one. This is where I thought I would be on day five. Oh. The key tower is immersion. Mm-hmm. And we know that, right? Like for everything. Gotta go for it. Gotta go for it. Gotta so, go for it. Wow. You know, this is powerful. And so if people want to learn about the study um, and they want to come and take a pleasure quiz. Yeah. Um, is Can I can I do self-promotion now? For yes, of course. Okay, of course. so they can yeah, pop like over to backtothebody.org, not yeah. .com, .org. And they could take the pleasure quiz and they can find... Information on the study is not there yet, but if they go to the, they go to the website, set up for the newsletter, yes. it's coming. Okay. It's just that I don't know when this is airing and the study was just published. Literally, you got an exclusive, babe. I love but this. The study just came out two days ago. I love this. And it's exciting. We'll have, the link in the, we'll have the link in the episode's description. I can um, give also you the link to the abstract. Awesome. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Uh, this I, has been a really insightful episode uh, for me and I'm sure for my Love Bites family. The last segment of my show is called Hot or Not. Um, you right, take up my glasses. I've I'm done ready. a lot of Hot or Nots on my Instagram and TikTok. So uh, they're a little crazy. Um, so just tell us if you think it's hot or not. Okay. All right. Number one, eating caviar off his asshole. Hot. <laughs> You're like, I can see it. I can I can go there. Number two, this is simple. Anal sex. Hot. Okay. Number three, getting fingered on the subway. Okay, they're all hot. Scary. <laughs> Some of them are edgy. Okay. Yeah. So hot and edgy. Yes, hot and edgy. Hot Number and four. I wonder if you have tried this. Pop play in the supermarket. Pop play. Pop play. Puppy. P -P. Oh, puppy play. Yes, puppy play. In the supermarket. I've never done that. Would you try? Um, so is it hot? Yeah, it's creative. <laughs> and lastly. <laughs> I can wait my tail. This is, this is perfect time because number five, sex parties with furries. Not so hot. <laughs> Not for you. Not for no. you. <laughs> awesome. Um, so where can everybody find you? The website? Back to the body dot, dot org on Instagram. Um at the Pamela Madsen. And Facebook. I'm big on Facebook. Um again, Pamela Madsen. And I'm verified in all those. So, you know, if you're looking at, looking for Pamela Madsen, remember there's a sexy one. Yes. There's a very famous music conductor in San Francisco. Oh. Don't write her. <laughs> okay. Oh, I wonder if she gets a lot of sex uh, messages. She gets a lot of my emails. <laughs> so oh my um, but, but go to the website and get on the newsletter. Take the pleasure quiz. Yes. And find out about the study. 
have a consultation. They're free. Awesome. And explore yourself. Remember, you don't need permission. You need support. Love and it. you fought for that. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs> And my Love Bites fam, thank you so much for listening to the episode. Um, let me know what you think about it because I always love hearing from you. And per usual, have an orgasmic day. Bye. Thanks for listening. This was, this was Love Bites. Love Bites. By Dr. Tara. Follow Dr. Tara on social media at lovebites.co. Have an orgasmic day.